All right, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Structure Free Learning. And in this video, we're gonna do an example problem using the principle of work and energy. Got here a particle that has a mass of three kilograms. It's sliding here just before it enters this frictionless ramp at two meters per second. And it's connected to a spring with a stiffness. The stiffness is 50 newtons per meter. What I'd like to do is determine the velocity when theta equals 45 degrees. So this angle theta, when it opens up to 45, what is the speed of the particle here? We're going to use the principle of work and energy. Now we could do this problem by using the n and t components of our equations of motion, but that can get pretty challenging geometrically. If we use the principle of work and energy, which just derived from the tangential component of the equation of motion, we're left to deal mostly with just magnitude associated with energy, as opposed to worrying about direction and magnitude for the these equations of motion. It helps us really simplify the geometry of this problem. Now, as a quick recap, this T represents the kinetic energy. It's equal to one half mass times the velocity squared. The sum of U1 to 2 is the work done by external forces going from 1 to 2. Now, the way I like to start out these problems is to actually by writing out that principle of work and energy, which I already did once, but I'll do it again anyway, as if I'm pro solving the problem. T1 plus Plus the sum, the work from one to two is equal to the kinetic energy at two. Now with the principle of work and energy, one of the things to do is to actually identify the beginning or stage one and the end that we're interested or stage two. And for us, or in many cases, it's really where we know the velocity and where we need to find the velocity. So this would represent stage one right here where we know the kinetic energy at one. And then we have to find the velocity or kinetic energy at a second stage. And that's gonna be here v2 at theta equals 45 degrees. Now the hard part about the principle of work and energy is actually calculating the work done by each of the external forces. And the thing we have to do is identify the external forces acting on the particle from one to two. So I find it helps if I can draw the particle in between one and two and so that I can visualize all the external forces acting on it. It's really very much like drawing a, a free body diagram when you solve this using the equations of motion. So here, this was, this was stage one, and then stage two was at about 45 degrees here. So somewhere in between, my particle would be right about here. And there is a spring force, which is pulling back, trying to return to its unstretched length. I'll call that FS. There's a weight of this particle here acting straight down. And you know, it also helps it, to recall that this is this, you know, the principle of work is energy is really using the normal and tangential components. And so this coordinate system, I want to identify that the positive n direction is towards the center of curvature here, plus n. The plus t direction would be tangential to the path, and which in this case is here, the path of the center of the particle is what we're focused on, is this plus t direction like this. Here, this, this angle is some arbitrary theta. And when it reaches theta equals 45, that's the velocity we're interested in. There's also a normal force which I will call N, and it's the normal to the box or whatever, the particle that it is. I'll call it NP for N, normal to the particle. And so these are my external forces uh, that are acting on the particle. The, the ramp is frictionless, so there's no, no frictional force. I'm going to be dealing with the, the work done by each of these. I know that there's going to be a work due to the weight. There's going to be a work due to the spring force. But here for the normal force, because it's perpendicular to the path, the work done by the normal force is zero. And so now what I'm left with is trying to figure out the work done by each of these. And in, in and in all cases, the work is really just the force times the distance in the direction of motion. So now I know which external forces to work. If I go back and I look at my principle of work and energy, you know, I know that here, let's see, I have this one half mv1 squared, this is my kinetic energy at one, plus the total work from one to two, and that's gonna have two components. It's gonna be the work of weight plus the work of the spring force is equal to my kinetic energy at stage two, one half mv2 squared. And so now, really, this is a problem about, I know my mass, I know my velocity, I'm trying to find this velocity of two, I've gotta calculate the work associated with weight and the work associated with the spring force. That's really the tough part about this problem. So here, Let's go with the work of weight. 
Now, to help me with my work of weight, I've brought the drawing back, but I've gotten rid of everything else. I'll draw the weight force here, W, all throughout the particle, going from 1 to 2. And the work of weight is just the force times the distance. So it would be weight times the change in vertical distance delta y here. So if I say that this distance right here, this point right here is y equals 0, then my first height, this distance from 0 all the way up here, the center, y1, this is 0.5 meters. So y1 is 0.5 meters, and y2 was just just this distance right here, which is exactly the same as, if I look at this little triangle right here like this, this distance right here is also y2, and y2 is just r cosine of theta. Again, it would just be 0.5 meters cosine of 45 degrees. And the distance from here to here is delta y. Now, I like to deal with just magnitudes now and then decide on the sign of the work after change in y is just y2 minus y1, 0 0.146 meters. The direction of my force is in the direction of motion downwards. This is considered positive work. And so uw, the work due to weight, is equal to the mass times gravity times delta y is positive 4.29 newton meters, or if you want, 4.29 joules. So next, we're going to determine the work by the force of the spring. Now the work of a spring force is described by the following relationship. This integral from S1, the stretch in the spring at stage one, to the stretch in the spring at stage two, and then this Fs dS. Now this force in the spring, if it's a linear spring, our graph for the force in the spring, Fs, is K times S, where S is the amount of stretch in the spring. And here when the stretch is zero, the force in the spring would, would be zero, and as I stretch it, the more I stretch, the the more that my force increases. The slope of this line would be the stiffness, k. And the work is the area under the curve. So initially, if my spring is stretched to a distance s1, then this would be the force in the spring. And then if I stretch it, if I pull on it, and I stretch it a further distance so that it's stretched out to a distance s2, then here, this would be my force in the spring at stage 2. And this area under this portion right here would be the amount of work done by the spring. Now, one of the tricky things about this is, is to actually have the correct sign. And as long as you know the direction of the spring force and then the direction of motion, then you should be able to determine whether or not the work is positive or negative. So in our example problem here, what we need is the stretch at stage one. How, how much is the spring stretched at stage one? And then how much is the spring stretched at stage two, which is really just a geometry problem. So let's go ahead and first and determine the stretches and then we'll talk about the sign and calculate the work. All I need to know is the distance from here to here. Now my unstretched length L0 is equal to 0.25 meters. This is the length of my spring at 1. And if I just look, if I look at this triangle right here, boom, like this, I know I know that because of this circular path here, this distance is also 0.5. And L1 is just 0.5 squared plus 0.5 squared square root or 0.5 times the square root of 2 which will give me 0 0.707 meters l2 is the distance of the, is the length of the spring at stage 2 right here this is l2 at l2 theta equals 45 degrees i know that here this is 90 degrees this is 45 degrees so, so that would make this entire angle 135 degrees and because this is also 0.5 meters and this distance right here is 0.5 meters then i know from the law of sines that this angle and this angle are the same so i'll just call those alpha by the law of sines i would say that l2 over the sine of 135 degrees is equal to 0.5 meters over the sine of alpha and alpha 
is just simply alpha would be let's see it would be 180 degrees minus 135 degrees divided by 2 because there's two alphas and the sum of all the angles in a triangle is 180 and so this would be 22.5 degrees and this would tell me that L2 is equal to 0.924 meters so those are the lengths of my springs at stage 1 and at stage 2 the stretch would then be it would be specifically S1 and S2. So at stage one, when my particle is at one, this, my string is stretched 0.457 meters. And at two, my spring is stretched 0.674 meters. And so now I can apply that straight into my integral here, this integral right here. Uh, I have the spring stiffness. I know what S is. When I look at this integral, U, F, S, you know, I would have, again, S1, S2. I already know those. I substitute for the force in the spring, this linear spring. And this gives a, a really popular result. This would be 1 half K S2 squared minus 1 half K S1 squared. And, and this, I like to just consider this a magnitude. So I'll put absolute values around it so that we don't even have to worry about the signage right now. And here I would have this based on this and by substituting the numbers, I would get that the work of the spring force has a magnitude. All right, so now that we have the magnitude of the work done by the spring force, we've got to determine whether this work is positive or negative. And so, you know, we might want to consider just to take a look at what a spring, how a spring behaves as we stretch it. And here, I have this drawing here. I got this spring attached to a mass and it's stretched at a distance one. It's at one, the spring force is trying to restore it or get it back to the mass, back to its original position. And so it's pointing to the left. When I pull it further and take it to S2, I stretch it a further distance. That spring force is still pointing to the left, trying to get it back to zero. And because the spring force was opposing the direction of motion, it was doing negative work. So if we went from S2 to S1, then that would have been positive positive work, right? Because the spring force would have been in the direction of motion. And so when I look at this system that I have here, I know at stage one, the spring force is pointing this way. As I move to point two, the spring stretches even more. My force in the spring opposes the direction of motion. I have negative work. And so here, the work of the spring force is negative 6.14 newton. Now that I have the work components, I can now put it all back together in the principle of work and energy. And when I substitute numbers, and here again, my only unknown is this velocity. And now when I solve and I plug and chug, I will get that the velocity of the particle at two is 1.66 meters per second. If I wanted to find the normal force here, then I'm going to use some of the forces in the end direction to calculate that normal force. All right. Well, I hope this was a useful video. Take it easy. Structure